Dobre večer, tutaj William. Vitajte na Sotokot Njovem, potsom evanju, polskich i irlandskich, vidimosti zemna. William and Murphy. The main headlines this week have included The Polish presidential race has a new entrant, with Rafał Szewskowski replacing Margozata Kadawa-Bonska as Platform Obywatelska's candidate. Lot is set to resume a limited number of domestic flights from June 1st. Poland marks the 100th anniversary of the birth of Pope St. John Paul II. And Hrabie, Poland's oldest oak tree, is officially declared dead. The Polish presidential election race, whenever the vote actually takes place, has a new contender. Last Friday, Deputy Sejm Speaker and former Platforma Obywatelska Prime Ministerial Candidate, Margazata Kadawa Bonska, announced her withdrawal from the race following a catastrophic collapse in her support, which left her badly trailing rival candidates. She told the press conference she was stepping aside to make way for another party candidate, who would have a better chance of defeating incumbent President Andrzej Duda. As had been widely anticipated, she was replaced as a performer of Vitelska candidate by Warszawa Mayor Rafał Szaskowski, who is seen as a more liberal and indeed more polarising figure than Kadawa Wonska who attempted to portray herself as a moderate politician capable of reaching across Poland's bitter political divide. However, unlike her prime ministerial campaign, which, while ultimately unsuccessful in unseating the Prawo Isprawili Wojsk government, enhanced her standing, the presidential bid never recovered from her perceived indecisiveness or required to take part in the elections as originally scheduled. Her support plunged from over 20% in February to just 4% by April. Parliamentary Speaker Elzbieta Witek is expected to shortly announce a new date for the vote, whose first round technically went ahead on May 10th, but which of course was annulled as no polling stations were actually open. Announcing her withdrawal, Kadawa Bonska admitted responsibility for the failure of her campaign, saying the public didn't know if she was actually standing in the poll, having said she would boycott it, but not formally withdrawing from the race. However, she did claim that, without my strong voice, this May election would probably have taken place. Credit her otherwise for that can probably be more properly ascribed to Yaroslav Govan. Kadawa Bonska's withdrawal leaves the race without a female contender, with the main contenders in addition to Duda and Szaskowski being the television personality and journalist Szymon Hawabnia, whose support has surged in the polls, Władysław Kosciniak Kamisz, the leader of the centrist Polish People's Party, Wiosna's Robert Biedron, and Confederatius Szysztof Bozak. Initial polling since the change of candidate shows it's paying dividends for the main opposition party, with Szaskowski running at around 15% of the vote, putting him in second place for the first ballot, but well behind Andrzej Duda on 43%. However, Szaskowski is already facing strong political attacks from Pravo Isprawiedli Vosht and organs of the media, much of it focused on its outspoken support for LGBT rights. The chairman of Pravo Isprawiedli Vosht's executive committee, Szysztof Sobolowski, said in an interview with Polska Radio that we will have a choice between the white and red Poland, represented by the current president, and a rainbow Poland. He also raised questions about reports that Platforma Obywatelska is already unofficially gathering signatures in support of Szyszkowski's nomination. 100,000 are required, which is illegal before the election period has officially commenced. Validly nominated candidates in the previously annulled election have been exempted from having to freshly gather signatures. In addition to Szyszkowski, the opposition also reportedly considered Senate Speaker Tomasz Grodzki and the former minister Radosław Sikorski as presidential candidates. Gazeta Wyborska claimed that Platforma Obywatelska ordered polling to see which candidate stood the best chance against Andrzej Duda, and Szewskowski was the most popular choice, behind only Donald Tusk, who previously ruled himself out of the contest. However, Szewskowski may also have less ability than other less polarising opposition figures to marshal the combined opposition vote against President Duda in any second ballot. Szaskowski's candidature was announced at a press conference by Platforma Obywatelska's leader, 
Boris Budka, who said he was the unanimous choice of the party's board. Monday marked the 100th anniversary of the birth on May 18, 1920, of Karol Josef Wojtyla, the future Pope John Paul II in Wadowice, southern Poland. Though of course inevitably somewhat stymied by the current situation, it was nonetheless extensively marked in Poland and indeed worldwide. Top Polish political leaders attended a special mass in Kraków to mark the anniversary. Speaking on Monday, Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki said that John Paul II changed the history of the world. Speaking at a ceremony in Warsaw, at which the German embassy gifted a fragment from the Berlin Wall, Morawiecki said that John Paul II, our great, wonderful countryman, changed the history of the world. It is thanks to him, thanks to solidarity, that communism collapsed and we have been able to create a free Poland over the years. We all owe him boundless gratitude. Germany's ambassador to Poland, Rolf Nickel, said that his country wanted to thank Poland and John Paul II for their contribution to the fall of the Berlin Wall, adding that today we are paying tribute to one of the greatest Polish figures of all time, the man of the century. Poland's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jacek Czatopowicz, said on Monday that due to John Paul II, a bloodless revolution swept Poland in 1989, and Central and Eastern Europe set off on a march toward freedom. In a Twitter post, he described the late pontiff as a tireless pilgrim who reached out with the good news to people living in the most remote parts of the globe. President Andrzej Duda described him as a Pope of freedom and solidarity, and as one of the most important figures of the 20th century. Certainly, along with other leaders, including US President Ronald Reagan and UK Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, as well, of course, as the dissident movements within the Soviet bloc, most notably Solidarity, John Paul II made an enormous contribution to changing the narrative of world history in the direction of freedom in the 1980s. Many Polish people living in Ireland may be unaware of the huge esteem in which is held by so many people in this country, arising from his famous papal visit to Ireland in 1979, just one year after his election to the papacy. In a tweet last Friday, the US ambassador to Poland, Georgette Mosbacher, said that, quote, if Germany wants to diminish nuclear capability and weaken NATO, perhaps Poland, which pays its fair share, understands the risks and is on NATO's eastern flank, could handle the capabilities here. The remark is seen as a response to suggestions from within Germany's Social Democrats, junior partners in the country's coalition government, that US nuclear weapons should be withdrawn from German soil. On Wednesday, the Central Statistical Office reported that employment in Polish companies fell by 2.1% in April, compared to the same month last year, with a 2.4% fall compared to March. The government is hoping that a so-called anti-crisis shield of measures to inject funds into the economy will help to minimise the economic impact of the COVID-19 crisis. On Tuesday, Poland's state-owned airline, LOT, said it plans to resume flights on a limited number of domestic passenger routes from June 1st. It's expected that after domestic flights are resumed, LOT will resume connections to European countries that are deemed safe within her continental connections to follow later. Poland had suspended international scheduled flights as well as passenger rail collections on March 15th. In a sad piece of news, well I certainly think it's sad, reputedly Poland's oldest oak tree has died aged apparently around 750 years old after being damaged in an arson attack in 2014 in which a fire was started in the tree's rotten trunk. It was one of the oldest trees in the world. The culprits had never been brought to justice. It's been declared dead after failing to sprout any new leaves this year. The tree was located in the Sprotava forest district of Lubuskia province. The tree was known as Hrabie in honour of the Polish king Borisław the Brave or Borisław Hrabie in Polish. Despite its official death, the tree would not be removed and cuttings from the tree had already been planted nearby. The manager of the Polish national soccer team, Jerzy Brencek, has agreed a contract extension which will leave him in charge at least until the end of 2021, 
the Polish Football Association announced on Monday. The extension follows the postponement of the European Championships until next year. He's been in charge since July 2018. Pavsescu na Cienčijin. Zapraszam na kolejny Otisame Proje. The Branets.